Yeah, fascinating that. Next, the work of a Rhodes policing officer is both fast-paced and at times very dangerous. But despite huge obstacles, one officer is determined to keep doing the job he loves. I wanted to join the police force. It's always been a childhood dream of mine. The role as a Rhodes policing officer is an exciting one. Yankee Mike, Yankee Mike. PC Mark Woodcock is a Rhodes policing officer at West Midlands Police. Today, he's on duty with PC Luke Jemson. I am Tango Charlie 17, Code 2, check please. Mark realised his dream of becoming a police officer in 2007. Yes, yes. I left school at 16 because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to join the police. I was very fortunate joining at 18 as a special constable, so it was a really good feeling. But in 2015, Mark was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, a form of inflammatory bowel disease. It was probably around nine months after getting married, just had our first child, so life's great. All these exciting things that you want to do in life, and then you're diagnosed with this disease that you don't know what it means, you don't know what it's going to bring. So it's quite a scary time in my life, really. Whose car is it then? My mum's. Your mum's. Mark tried various medications to manage his condition, but nothing worked. I knew that things were getting worse. I was going to the toilet more frequently, passing blood again, and I was also getting sick every time I went to the toilet. The weight was falling off me. I was feeling more tired. My skin was awful. I spoke to my IBD nurse, and they said, right, you need to come into hospital now. In August 2020, doctors gave Mark an ultimatum. Try another medication with only 20% chance of success or have part of his digestive system removed. After being in hospital for four weeks in total so far that year, being away from my two young kids who are only eight and five, being away from my wife, the rest of my family, and I knew that one day I'd end up having a stoma anyway, I thought, just get it done. Mark had surgery to create a stoma, an opening which connects the bowel to the surface of the abdomen. He'd now have to wear a bag, but the results were life-changing. I saw a massive improvement from having my stoma to the point where all my symptoms had gone. Obviously, I wasn't going to the toilet because I didn't have a colon, but the fatigue gone. It was like a miracle thing that happened for me, so it was the best thing ever. But Mark worried his new stoma bag would prevent him returning to the front line. I'm only 34. I've got a long career ahead of me still. I've got a great okay. role on roads policing. My biggest fear was losing that. So the issue with that particular vehicle, being impatient, they've decided to go to the offside of someone who's queuing and try and cut in front of the traffic, purely to try and save two or three seconds, which is inconsiderate driving. So he's going to be reported for that offence and also a few defects on the vehicle that we've just identified as well. People driving in an inconsiderate manner, excess speed, on the mobile phones, being drunk, drugged up, not wearing seatbelts, those kind of offences will lead to deaths on the road, so we do try and tackle them head on. During his recovery, Mark found a fellow officer on Twitter living with the same condition. I found somebody called Colitis Cop, and he's the one who told me everything I needed to do. Colitis Cop wore a titanium armoured plate to protect his stoma bag while on duty. This year, West Midlands Police paid for a similar plate for Mark so he could return to the front line. It means a great deal to me that West Midlands Police have invested the time and the money into keeping me front line. I've been able to carry on life as normal, which is the whole point of having a stoma. You get your life back. Hello, thank you. What's the when you get a second? Uh, would you mind taking a look at log 2097? Looks a bit rushed, doesn't it? Now Mark is helping others with colitis through his own Twitter account, Stoma Cop. Colitis Cop, he kind of inspired me, gave me that drive to get back to work front line. And I thought, what a great way for me to try and help somebody else. Mark's colleague, Luke, was inspired by him to join the police after his colitis diagnosis forced him to leave the army. So I was first diagnosed when I was 18. I'd fallen ill just before I was about to be deployed to Afghanistan. 
and I literally felt like my world had, had stopped. And I know that sounds quite dramatic, but when someone tells you, you your dream is over, um, you've got, you're gonna pack your bags and go home. Just that terrifying thought of what next. Yeah, we're gonna search you, mate. Luke had always planned to join the police after his army career, but he worried he wouldn't be able to with his condition. Then he found Stomacop. His colitis is a lot more severe than mine, and I thought, well, if he can do it, and he, he's such a specialist officer, then why, why can't I? You kind of get a copper's nose after a few years. When something doesn't seem right, it usually isn't. When we were behind them in traffic, there was a lot of shuffling around going on, a lot of looking in the rearview mirror, acting quite suspicious. We've then stopped them. One of them's produced uh, a couple of spliffs and a bag of cannabis. Therefore, we're satisfied to search both of them and the vehicle. I was first contacted by Luke probably around a week or two after starting my Twitter page. He got in touch, explained to me that he'd had several unsuccessful applications to the police and he believed it may be down to his disease. So I kind of give him that push to just say, Luke, just try one more time. It's definitely not your disease. Maybe it's just something else you're doing. He did and he got through and he's here now, so it's really good to see. Mark's a massive inspiration to me. I can 100% say if I hadn't have met Mark, I wouldn't be in the police. In February this year, Luke was officially sworn into the force and he's even done a few shifts with Mark. It's given me a motivation back. I've become a much more passionate person again. Almost like the half of me that I lost when I left the army has, has come back. You can still join the police with this disease. The police will fully support you. And Luke's a fine example of that. He's joined the police and he's cracking on with it. It's great to see. How brilliant is that? And PC Mark Woodcock joins me in the studio now. Mark, thanks so much for coming in this no morning. Problem. It was great to watch that film there. So inspirational. Thank you know, you. you've done some great work. You talk in the film about the metal plate that yes. you wear. Um, you've brought it in this morning. Yep, it's here. Tell us how it, how it works. Yeah, so it's a, a titanium plate that's imported from America from a company called Osteri Armour. It was originally designed for the military. Uh, what it does, I place it over my stoma bag and then put my stab vest on top of that. So it gives me that extra layer of protection when doing frontline duties. So does it feel like it makes a real difference day to day? Were there certain things that you weren't able to do before the belt that you, you feel more comfortable doing now? Yeah, definitely. Obviously being frontline, it comes with the, obviously the dangers of what we have to do, getting hands on with people. So for me, it kind of gives me that reassurance that I might not break my bag or the bag might not come off. Yeah. Uh, to start with, it was very uncomfortable, but I've got used to it now after time. So it just becomes like a normal thing that I put on every day. Just part of your uniform that you yeah, put exactly, on in the Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just a normal part of my PPE, like anything else that we put on. And tell us a bit more about colitis itself and, and how many people it affects. Yeah, I think it's around one in 420 people suffer with inflammatory bowel disease, which is ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. So there are a lot of us out there. Uh, more so than I ever knew. I didn't know it even existed until I was diagnosed with it. And this is why it's amazing to, to raise awareness around it, isn't it, Mark? We heard from your colleague Luke in the film there as well, who felt incredibly inspired by you and, and you speaking out. Yeah. Um, he was saying how initially he didn't feel like the, the force might be right for him because of his condition. Yeah. How did it feel when he actually got the job? It was great. I felt really proud of Luke. Everything he's accomplished. You know, he's had a hard time for such a young man. Uh, but at, when he spoke to me, I said, Luke, it's probably not due to your uh, colitis. It's probably due to something you're doing on the application. So I spoke with him several times and I've been there from the application process right until he came uh, on patrol with me for a couple of shifts on roads policing. That must be very rewarding for you as well, Mark, yeah, to definitely. see that transition, you know, and, and to see somebody at the end of it with a lot of confidence and looking forward to going to work. Yeah, it's really rewarding to me. I think, like anything, it's really nice to give back. I had the support from my colleagues, supervision at work, my family. So in order for me to kind of progress, it's nice to give back. And your family must be so proud of you. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're watching this morning, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're at school now <laughs> watching, bless them. Uh, my, uh, my son, Ethan, and my daughter, Evie. So it's, it's really nice. Uh, my wife's in the police as well. So very much police family. So 
And finally, Mark, to anybody who's watching this morning who has a disability and feel that they don't have the confidence to, yeah. you know, set, uh, set a career out in the, in the police force, what would you say to them? Just give it a go. You never know, do you? Uh, there are some disabilities which would prevent you being a frontline officer, but there's so many uh, police staff roles within the force that they could do and contribute to the organisation that way. Mark, it's great to speak to you. As we said, you're doing some really inspirational work and, and thank you so much Thanks for Thanks for having me. Great to chat. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. It's a great story, but the kids should be doing some work at school. Uh, it's time now for, to have a look at what's been coming in on the phones, texts and emails.